Welcome to episode 2 of How To CE5, where over the course of 21 episodes we are covering 21 basic things for you to do so that you can be a great CE5 ambassador and make contact with ET. I'm Andre Cardoso and today we'll be talking about meditation. Meditation is really important. It's a really fundamental groundwork for doing CE5, for initiating close encounters of the fifth kind. Meditation is really useful because it allows us to work with consciousness as a communication method and as a way of kind of using it as a signal and a beacon to draw ETs to our location. And it's also useful because working from an expanded state of awareness where you're entering higher states of consciousness, you're able to connect on a more meaningful level with ETs and also to work better together as a group. So the first thing I want to talk about is basically what is meditation? Try to give you an idea of what meditation is um, from my understanding and how it's useful in this context. So there are lots of methods. For me, from my understanding, meditation is any method that allows you to get in touch with um, and to connect with higher awareness or pure consciousness, um, expanded consciousness, uh, which is beyond space and time. And meditation is useful for all kinds of things. I'm sure you've read and seen, you know, there are lots more studies happening around meditation and the benefits of it um, for mental and physical health and for all kinds of things. The important thing about meditation, whatever method you choose, because there are so many methods, you, it's important to just find what works for you. There's uh, really, there's as many meditation methods as there are individual people who are, you know, going to be doing meditation. So someone gave me this visualization. It's, um, you imagine a bicycle wheel and the hub of the wheel is consciousness. That's like pure consciousness, deep awareness, which is the goal, the end goal of um, where you want to be and connect with in meditation. And the bicycle wheel has lots of different spokes. So every one of those spokes is a way to that same place. Every one of those spokes is a different method that you can use. Um, and on earth, there's as many different methods as there are people on the planet. So find what works for you. Um, how I think about meditation is that you want to keep it really simple. Um, whatever method you're using, the main element of a meditation method is having a reference point that you can gently put your awareness on. So once you have a reference point, whether it be a visual cue, um, uh, something that you're listening to, uh, just watching your breath as a reference point, using a, a mental repetition like a mantra, whatever the reference point that you use, you allow your awareness to gently rest upon it. And then as you're doing that, you become increasingly aware of the awareness that is watching or that is putting that is putting attention on that reference point. And in the course of the meditation, you shift so that the awareness kind of folds in on itself. So you become aware of awareness itself. And when you allow yourself to kind of dive right in on that, you can basically imagine consciousness as this infinite ocean and all of the perceptions that we might have, the reference point that we might be using in the meditation, thoughts that might be coming through our heads, all of those are like ripples on the surface of the ocean. And we go deep into consciousness and from that deep, deep, quiet place of consciousness, we can access all manner of abilities and information and um, places where we can really do a lot of great internal work and work through the use of intention, um, such as prayer and that kind of thing. So that's how I understand meditation to be. Um, that's kind of how it was taught to me. 
um, and how you can really keep it simple no matter what method you're using. You have a reference point. You focus on the awareness that is aware of that reference point and you go deep into that awareness and, and use it for whatever intention you have for that meditation, whether you're just trying to calm down, whether you're um, trying to put an intention on healing or something like that, or in our case, whether we're using the intention to connect with extraterrestrials. So um, in CE5, we're the, the main way that we do CE5 is in a group setting. So in a group setting, it's good to have a seated meditation practice that can be shared between the members. Whether everyone is following a guided meditation together, this can be one that is led by one of the members or using an audio recording, or whether everyone is just following their own silent practice, such as following the breath or using a mantra of some kind. I recommend using a seated practice. If you are going to recline on a reclining chair or be lying on the ground during a CE5, be sure that you're really awake and that you're not likely to fall asleep. It's really disruptive to the whole experience if somebody starts snoring. And it's also, um, you know, you're not going to be in that place of consciousness, that really meditative, clear state of awakeness, which is really necessary for making CE5 work really well, especially in the group setting. Okay, now we kind of know what meditation is and how we kind of want to do it. How can you learn and practice it? There are apps, you know, out there where you can learn meditation. There are lots of teachers. There are lots of different methods and lots of different ways. I recommend you kind of follow your gut and, you know, listen to yourself and trust what works for you. Maybe you've already have a meditation practice. Maybe you already um, have an experience in your life where you've had an a kind of transcendental experience, either in meditation or some other activity like playing music or going for a gentle walk. These are things that you can really use to help cultivate um, the quiet sense of awareness, which is really useful in doing CE5. You can develop your own style. I think it's useful to set aside 10 or 20 minutes once or twice a day and really stick with a practice that you can cultivate and develop. Um, the more you do it and the longer you have it as a part of your life, the more that you will be able to get out of it over time. It's uh, It really just builds and builds on itself. And don't get hung up if you miss a day or two or whatever. Like, um, It's a practice and it's something that you can work on for the rest of your life. Okay, so how do we use meditation in CE5? Why is it important? For one thing, it is grounding it helps keep things really grounded and centered. It brings clarity and allows for the dropping of distractions and anything that we may have going on in our lives. It allows for the dropping of physical limitations that we perceive imposed upon us and allows us to kind of move beyond, move into a place where we can move beyond the five physical senses. It allows us to develop further senses and abilities known as cities in the Sanskrit literature. That's S-I-D-D-H-I-S. There have been, you know, throughout history, there have been documented accounts of people going into different states of consciousness and having all kinds of things happen that wouldn't be able to be wholly explained by physical phenomena, but by um, the idea that consciousness is existing um, alongside physical space and time and also within phys all physical space and time. Some of these abilities are things like remote perception or remote viewing, which is something we use a lot in CE5. There's other things like connecting and communicating, things like telepathy. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things like bilocation, levitation, spontaneous healing. All these things can be accessed using meditation. In CE5, meditation is really important because it allows us to move into and to shift into really higher states of awareness and consciousness where we can have an increased effect in all kinds of ways. It can allow us to help magnify a higher level of consciousness around the earth um, and around the people of the earth and also allow for our consciousness to get on a level where we can actually meaningfully connect and communicate with other intelligent beings who are not human, 
including, in our case, extraterrestrials. So that's just kind of a brief introduction about how meditation is really useful in CE5. I hope that's helpful. In the next episode, we're going to be going into an add-on to meditation, the corollary, which is coherent thought sequencing, how we use meditation to actually initiate contact with ETs. There's a kind of add-on in the protocol that was developed by Dr. Stephen Greer. So tune in for that, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening.